Hello everyone. I am Mr. Pravin Yallapa Kumbar. Today we want to see the time division multiple axis that is TDMA. Learning outcome of this topic will access. At the end of the session, student will be able to explain the concept of time division multiple axis that is TDMA. The contents of these topics are introduction, then we see the what are the features of a TDMA, then we want to see the derivation of efficiency of a TDMA, then how many number of a channels is required in a TDMA system that we want to see. Introduction. Now this figure one shows the TDMA scheme where each channel occupies a cylindrically repeating time slot. Here in this diagram it will show the three axis diagram representation. That three axis representation is the time, code and the frequency. Here the time slots is divided into number of channels. That is channel number 1, channel number 2, channel number 3 and up to the channel number n. Now time division multiple access that is a TDMA system divide the radio spectrum into the time slots and in each slot only one user is allowed to either transmit or receive. Now as shown in the figure 1 that each user occupies a cyclically repeating time slot. So a channel may be thought of a particular time slot that reoccurs every frame where n times slot comprise a frame. TDMA system transmit data in a buffer and burst method thus the transmission for any user is a non-continuous. Now figure 2 shows the TDMA frame structure. The frame is cylindrically repeated over time. Here in this diagram one TDMA frame consists of preamble then followed by information message then followed by the trail bits. Now in the information messages we divide that information messages into the n slots. Now each slot consists of a trial bits then followed by the sync bits, followed by the information data and the guard bits. This implies that unlike in a FDMA system which accommodate analog FM, digital data and digital modulation must be used with TDMA. The transmission from various users is interlaced into a repeating frame structure as shown in the figure 2. It can be seen that a frame consists of a number of a slots. Each frame is made up of a preamble and information message and tail bits. In TDMA or TDD, half of the time slots in the frame information message would be used for the forward link channels and the remaining half would be used for the reverse link channels. Now in TDMA or FDD system, an identical or similar frame structure would be used solely for either forward or reverse transmission. But the carrier frequency would be different for the forward and the reverse links. In general, TDMA or FDD system intentionally induce several time slots of the delay between the forward and the reverse time slots for a particular user so that duplexers are not required in the subscriber unit. In a TDMA frame, the preamble contains the address and synchronization information that both the base station and the subscribers used to identify each other. Guard times are utilized to allow synchronization of the receivers between the different slots and frames. Different TDMA wireless standards have a different TDMA frame structures. The features of a TDMA includes the following. The first one is a TDMA shares a single carrier frequency with several users where each user makes use of a non-overlapping time slots. The number of time slots per frame depends on the several factors such as the modulation technique, available bandwidth, etc. Data transmission for users of a TDMA system is not a continuous but occurs in a burst. This results in a low battery consumption since the subscriber transmitter can be turned off when we are not in use. 
Because of discontinuous transmission in a TDMA, the handoff process is much simpler for a subscriber unit since it is able to listen for other base station during the time slots. An enhanced link control such as that provided by the MAHO that is mobile associated handoff can be carried out by a subscriber by listening on an idle slot in the TDMA frame. TDMA uses different time slots for transmission and reception. Thus duplexers are not required even if FDD is used. A switch rather than a duplexer inside the subscriber unit is all that is required to switch between transmitter and receiver using TDMA. Fifth one, adaptive equalization is usually necessary in TDMA system since the transmission rates are generally very high as compared to the FDMA channels. In TDMA, the guard time should be minimized. If the transmitted signal at the edge of a time slots are suppressed sharply in order to shorten the guard time, the transmitted spectrum will expand and cause interference to adjacent channels. Seventh one is high synchronization overhead is required in a TDMA system because of a burst transmission. TDMA transmissions are slotted and requires the receivers to be synchronized for each data burst. In addition, guard slots are necessary to separate users and this results in the TDMA system having larger overhead as compared to FDMA. Now, eighth one is the TDMA has an advantage in that it is possible to allocate different number of a time slots per frame to different users. Thus, a bandwidth can be supplied on demand to different users by concentrating or regressing time slots based on priority. Now, efficiency of a TDMA. The efficiency of a TDMA system is a measure of the percentage of transmitted data that contains information as opposed to providing overhead for the access scheme. Now, the frame efficiency that is generated by NF is the percentage of a bits per frame which contains transmitted data. Here note that the transmitted data may include source and channel coding bits. So the raw end users efficiency of a system is generally less than NF. The frame efficiency can be found as follows. The number of overhead bits per frame is that is BOH is equal to NR plus BR plus NT into BP plus NT into BG plus NR into BG where this NR represents the number of reference bursts per frame, NT is the number of traffic bursts per frame, BR is the number of overhead bits per reference burst, BP is the number of overhead bits per preamble in each slot, BG is the number of equivalent bits in each guard time interval. So the total number of a bits per frame that is BP, BT is Bt is equal to Tf into R, where Tf is the frame duration, R is the channel bit rate. The frame efficiency that is Nf is given by is equal to 1 minus BOH divided by Bt into 100 that is in a percentage. Now the number of channels in a TDMA system. So the number of TDMA channel slots that can be provided in a TDMA system is found by multiplying the number of TDMA slots per channel by the number of channels available and is given by n is equal to m into b total minus 2b guard divided by bc where m is the maximum number of a tdma users supported at each radio channel so here two guard bands we are specifically use one for the low end of the allocated frequency band and one at the high end are required to ensure that user at the edge of the band do not bleed over into the adjacent radio service the references for these topics are, thank you.